The soldier pulled harder and began walking away with Bilal. The mother stood frozen, watching. The soldier thrust a mine in Bilal's hands and pushed him towards the house. The gun battle was still going on. And then Shamima said to me, Something seized my heart as I saw Bilal's hands shivering as he held the landmine. His legs were giving away and he was falling to the ground. Shamima lunged ahead and threw herself on, on her son. She took the mine from his hands and held him in his arms. A, three soldiers and an officer circled them, asking her to leave her son. She told the ask. She, she, she told the officer to leave her son and let her take the mine into the house. I held on to the mine and asked the officer to blow me up. He remained silent. She shouted again. Then he ordered the soldiers to let us go. I held Bilal. As we walked away, I saw them push an old man towards the house with the, land, with the mine in his hands. I mean, a couple of years back, I went back to her. I mean, this, this, her, her husband still sells peanuts by, in a, at a bus stop in Anantag. They're still, they're still waiting for justice. This meeting happened in 2005. It's, it's been eight years. And, and the incident had happened in 2001. There are, there, are, there are numerous stories like that, and this is not very different from the experiences of the people in, in, the, in Manipur or elsewhere in the subcontinent. And after the process of, I, mean, I, I was working on this book, I finished it, it got published. I told this story several times, and then even more darker, even more brutal exercises of power would just stare you at, in your face. Every, every two months, you can go somewhere and write a story like this. I mean, it's strange, but it's true, and this is, I think that is the worst, that is the only comment I really have to make. I think there is this intense feeling of repeating the same stories over and over again. And I think till these laws change, we'll, we'll continue repeating them. That might be the only way. And one hopes that that will make a difference. I, I'll just read a very, very short section now. Sorry, I've been told to talk, look at the mic properly. One of the, uh, one of the accompanying factors of the, the whole rubric of militarization it wasn't just, I mean, uh, under Arms for Special Powers Act, you know, the, the, the overarching blanket. I mean, what also accompanied the killings, especially in the context of Kashmir, was a, was a very widespread phenomenon of torture. And, and I, I, I think we should, we should talk about that too. That's a process that does not go away. That's a process that has not stopped in a place like Kashmir, where it was rampant in the 90s, but it, it still continues in the police stations. We saw that in, in the aftermath of 2010 protests. And, and these are stories that simply do not stop. So, I mean, there's a, there's a small section I'll read about. There was an infamous uh, torture uh, center in Srinagar known as Papa II, and a man who, who came out of there. Uh, so I, I met this man in, uh, in in Srinagar, and his name is Shafi. When I asked him after his arrest uh, how he was moved to, what what happened, and then he he tells me the story of this journey of what happens uh, once a person is picked up in a place like Kashmir or Manipur, and what happens, what follows. They kept me in a local BSF camp for a week before shifting me to Papa too. At the BSF camp, he was interrogated, beaten with fists, feet, batons, guns. They wanted information. They wanted weapons. 
Shafi was moved to Papa too. I asked him, what was it like? It was hell, he said, fumbling to find a cigarette burning in a, on, the, on an ashtray. He was at, in Papa too. He was thrown into a room crowded with 20 men. The floor was bare. Smears of blood blemished the whitewashed walls. Every man had a coarse black blanket for Every man had a coarse black blanket for bedding. The blankets were full of lice. We called them lice blankets, Shafi said. He laughed. A corner of their room was their toilet. They were given polythene bags to relieve themselves. Then they threw the bags into a dustbin in the room. Every man, every time a man had to go to the bathroom, two others held the blankets like, like a curtain to give him some privacy. Others stared at the floor. Shafi and his fellow prisoners slept, laid out like rows of corpses. Throughout the night, people woke up shouting, cursing the lice, trying to sleep again, only to be woken by the next man battling the vermin. Some managed to sleep, though the lights were never switched off. During the interrogation, I was made to stare at very bright bulbs. Even in our room, the light burned my eyes. I craved darkness. And then darkness came. Shafi began losing his eyesight. He can barely see now. Thank you. Uh, I really don't know. I, there's nothing to add. You talk so much about Imphal. Uh, and after 12 years, I get to stay in Imphal for like six months straight. And in that six months, I have been beaten up twice by Manipur police for no reason. And then on a very optimistic note, my friends have uh, told me that I am now a real Manipuri. And, and some people say that, no, you are not yet a uh, Manipuri. A samurai rifle has to beat you up. You know, that's how you become, you baptize, you know. And this is a song about how tired one can be about uh, a place like Manipur. I mean, it's amazing. We have an Assam rifle camp inside the university, and no one says anything about it. I mean, can you imagine GNU having a Sikh regiment or... <laughs> Can you please, uh, is there any way you can increase my uh, guitar? What kind of hometown is it? I need permission to go around. kind of university is this? They got an army camp inside the campus And no one says anything about it I And the professors, they are busy making friends with the army for the free alcohol Like Fidel Castro for deporting Ginsburg in 1965. 